keeping up with the Commodore, cause the Commodore is keeping up with you. The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Dragon's Lair was a unique game that was ahead of its time. It told a great story with a fantastic Don Bluth animation, orchestral quality music, and a pretty decent story. Compared to many of the high graphic, low story quality games of today, this Laserdisc classic is a game to stand the test of time. I suppose it goes without saying that with any classic, there will be attempts to profit from it and be darned with the people that are hoodwinked into buying it. Here's Dragon's Lair by the Commodore 64. Now, back in the day when I purchased this from my local market store, I knew that this game wouldn't be the perfect recreation, but unfortunately, the main character looks like one of the orcs from Dungeons and Dragons wearing Dirk the Derring's clothes. In fact, it looks a little bit like his role was taken by Beaker from The Muppet Show. Much of the scenery is not even a half-hearted effort to replicate the game. It is almost as if they said to themselves, that it is impossible to make this look much like the original. So don't knock yourselves out trying for what you can't do, just get it somewhat similar. The game is a little short on music, and the sound effects are not the best, and unfortunately, the character moved as if he was constipated and had superglue attached to his shoes, making for a sluggish character response. What I'm going to do is show you some footage from each of the rooms, and then maybe throw in its arcade version counterpart. Dirk has leapt onto a falling disc here, which has started to plummet down a deep hole. You have to make sure that Dirk stays on the disc, while the dragon's minions are hell-bent on blowing him off it. If you manage to stay on the disc long enough, it stops, allowing you to leap off, if you're quick enough. The skull hallway scene is similar to its arcade counterpart, where Dirk has found himself in a hallway with doors on either side of him. Suddenly, they open, and skulls and giant skeletons begin to attack. Here, you must use your trusty sword and some nifty footwork to either dodge or slay the marauding undead. The burning rope scene next, and a fire is raging below. You must reach the top of the screen by swinging from the ropes between platforms before the fire catches up to you. Well, since you've now inadvertently strolled into the dragon's haunted weapons room, I guess you must either avoid or destroy these large flying menaces in order to proceed. A series of ramps form the route to the next screen, but unfortunately they are guarded by the evil goons. If you pause too long to battle with them, the ramps disappear and Dirk can quickly fall to his doom. Here you go from wandering through an innocent looking room to all of a sudden being attacked by large serpent tentacles which appear through the cracks in the walls and ceiling. You must kill these or be crushed by its deadly coils. There's a second disc in the game which operates exactly as the first. However, it's flipped and you approach from the other side. Here you must chase Singe's champion knight around a giant chessboard and slay him, but must do this whilst avoiding deadly pools of fire.
here you must slay the dragon and collect your prize, the Princess Daphne. Considering the immense difference between a Laserdisc arcade game and a C64, I think Software Projects did the best they could at the time with this conversion. The graphics aren't as good as they should have been, granted, but looking back now, it was an admirable attempt to bring a technological arcade marvel home to the C64. Sadly, the high difficulty and stop-start nature of the game turned many off. Better get used to that death sequence. If you have an emulator, it might be worth playing just to say you did it, or as a reminder of how some game conversions were, but you won't play it a second time unless you were a massive fan of Dragon's Lair, which is a shame. But remember, these are only my views, and I'm sure, with games being so subjective, that there were many of you that loved this game. So, let me know in the comments section, and don't forget to hit the like button. Also, if you enjoy these classic Commodore titles and want to join me on this journey, then please do consider subscribing to the channel, where I'll be revisiting plenty more titles just like this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.